you so much for uh, joining us today. Can you describe what you'll be reading today? Um, I'll try. Okay. I'm over many many years. I've been obsessed with ancient poetry uh, in Greek and Latin, and as my work has been inspired by it in varying degrees. By which I mean sometimes I translate outright, and sometimes I just take off from these ancient poems and make something quite else out of them. So I'll be reading a medley of short lyrics that are inspired by uh, ancient Greek, say by, by Sappho, by uh, Alcman, who was a Spartan poet of the seventh century BCE. And, but the longest section that I'll read is from a series of prose poems uh, inspired by the Odyssey. Okay, and what are they? What are the prose poems? Yeah. Or describe the series, what is the series called? It's called Odyssey. Okay. Not the Odyssey, but just Odyssey, to be a little, a little modest. <laughs> and they were inspired by Homer, but they were also inspired by some artwork by a friend of mine, the painter James McGarrell, who had done some, I think, fabulous monotypes uh, from scenes from the Odyssey. And even though I had read the Odyssey partly in Greek and English many, many times in my life, I've lived in this poem for many years, when I reread the poem, in a sense, through Jim's through Jim's art, I saw quite a different poem, an angrier poem. I, I think partly because um, it was just after 9-11 uh, and our country had gone to war and I was terrifically upset by this and uh, I, I was thinking, I read the Odyssey as a more of a post-war trauma poem. Um, than I had before, and an angrier poem. You write a lot about the Greco-Roman tradition in, yeah. in modern art. Can you just, what is the fascination that, that that time period seems to hold on the artistic imagination? Well, it's hard to speak for other people, but I think I'm not alone in feeling that the ancient Greek poems, which are really different from ancient Latin poems in Latin, but, but the Latin poems were inspired by the Greeks, um, in feeling that these ancient poems are somehow contemporary. I don't regard them as ancient, the same way as I don't regard the Greek gods as absent. I, I think probably most of us have been touched and burned by Aphrodite, hurt by the god Ares of war, who seems to be dominating our country these days. Uh, in other words, th those gods represent to me real forces in the world, very frightening forces that probably should be propitiated. And, um, and these poems, by the, as different as they are, Achillicus from Alcman, from Sappho, uh, from Alcaeus, from the Romans like Horace, Catullus, they are they have a power in them that I, I, I much as I love English, poetry in Italian, French, English, uh, these ancient poems to me have a concrete, dramatic power that I don't see anywhere else. So, I want to steal that power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want that power. I want that power, and that's what you're searching for in the post Right, post right, right. <laughs> it's just electrifying. It's like putting your finger in an electric socket and getting a huge shock. Not enough to kill you, but it certainly electrifies. I, you know, there, there's been, I think we're just beginning artistically to come to grips with um, what 9-11 meant. Yeah, well, I think we're just beginning, just beginning to come to grips with what it means to be in a state of apparently endless war. Um, and a lot of my poems obliquely try to face that and partly I found Homer and then Virgil really helpful for writing about war because right. I didn't want to sound like an op-ed article in the New York Times uh, so I try to go take a circuitous route around. Right, right. Yeah, it is interesting. I sort of never thought of when you talked about the, um, the sort of the trauma Mm. of Troy and how it plays out in all these different episodes that they can't seem to escape the violence no matter what right. they do. Right, and, right, right. Sort of right, stuff. I mean if the Iliad is the poem of the war, the Odyssey is the post-war poem. Where it's a poem about post-traumatic stress. Yeah, I would think everybody's damaged, everybody's, and the ones who didn't go to war, like the suitors, are there wreaking havoc at home. Mm -hmm. The ones who do come home are savage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How, does, how do you think that plays out in your own work? Well, in many, many ways. You mean the war? The mm -hmm. fact of... Um, war, yeah, the war. Well, it's just an obsession I can't, I mean, I can't let go of. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been 
finding myself writing poems through the lenses of other wars. So besides writing poems inspired by Homer, whether Iliad or, or Odyssey, I've written poems inspired by both, or Virgil, I'm very haunted by Virgil in the sense of the sorrow of empire. In a way, he strikes me as a more American epic poet because we're an empire and empires come with sorrow. And, um, and Virgil knew that and I think the Aeneid is a much as it glorifies Augustus and the, the nascent Roman Empire, it also reckons up a terrible cost. I, that's why I just love Virgil. But I've also written poems under the lens of World War I and World War II. Mm -hmm. Anything except the present. Right. That's I not understand. actually yeah. quite true. There are a couple of poems that sneak around the present. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yesterday we were, there was a staged reading of Homer and one of the things that came up, uh, well there was a musician actually who was layering, layering sounds. Mm. Um, like a collage, a mm -hmm. sound collage. Mm -hmm. I was watching. I was just watching the images um, that inspired you, ah. um, and thinking about the layering of the artistic imagination. Ah, yes. As a collage, and wondered whether you see your own work then, or saw your response to is it McFarrell? M uh, McGarrell. McGarrell's, McGarrell's work in that way, or uh, in, in as a layering? As sort of, yeah, a, a layering of meaning on top of. Yes, very much, uh, particularly since I know the Odyssey pretty well as a poem, uh, um, but since I was, the other layer added was Jim McGarrell's monotypes, so it was as if I was rereading the poem through quite a different angle of vision, and um, and Jim's seeing through his, his prints was making me see uh, the poem, you might say, in certain violent contrasts of dark and light. And certain, I was fascinated in his prints by the way certain of the human figures seemed almost to be made of air, and the air seemed almost dense like a material. So there seemed to have been a swap between what was material and what was atmospheric. And uh, that uh, made me think a lot about ghosts and shades and the way the dead are haunting the living through, through the Odyssey. Oh, great. Okay, well, we look forward to hearing you. Well, thank you so much. Well, I'm you. really excited to be, to be honoring Bearden, too. It's a very exciting mission. Was he, a, was he a painter who inspired you as a young painter yourself? I yeah, mean, I looked at him. I, I mean, I, th I sort of, I was excited by uh, the simplification of shapes in his work and the bright colors and the daring with the, the color compositions. Um, so some of the, it was as if, I love Matisse and I, sort of, when I was a young painter I wanted to be Matisse, but I thought, saw in Bearden somebody who I thought it also was looking hard at Matisse and figuring out how to make stories in shapes out of, the, out of simplified shapes and brilliant color. Mm.